all right guys welcome back um so as you can see there's been some progress made um in project shinigami and what's going on so far with the engine uh last i had showed you i had the oil pan off and obvious damage to bearings and potentially to the crank and stuff like that so well it was time to take it all apart um <laughs> so we just got done doing that uh we got it pulled all the way apart um, I'm going to show you a couple different parts and everything else, what we've found so far. Um, and basically everything else is going to have to go to a machine shop. Um, we're going to have to get everything measured out, see what's still viable, what I can still use, what, you know, what I'm going to be able to retain and what I've got to replace. So uh, once it gets done at the machine shop, um, I'll know whether or not it's, once again, a full stroker kit, or like I'm gonna be able to put it back together and just run it. But let me show you a couple of things that we got going on. Um, I mean, the block itself actually doesn't look bad. I was worried about like really deep scoring or something else that might be there. Um, it's got some slight pitting. Um, it's hard to see in camera, but it's got some very slight pitting. I'm hoping when I take it over to the machine shop, it may just be a matter of them being able to uh, just just hone it a little bit, board a little bit. Uh, it'll probably end up oversized to an, to the next size up for the piston, um, but still salvageable. Um, that's the hope. The pistons themselves, if this gets bored out any larger, of course, I'm not going to be able to use the stock pistons that's in it. The stock pistons, looking at them, um, I mean you're not going to be able to see it on camera. I'll see if it'll pick it up or not, but there is scoring across it. Um, it's as far as, as far as we can tell, taking it all apart, it's all the stock stuff. So it's been in there the 25 years, whatever it is at this point. Um, so stock pistons. Um, <laughs> if, if everything was good in the block, um, it may have just been some pistons and rods, but it looks like I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to bore out the cylinders. So that means new pistons, new rods and new crank is what it seems like. So I'm going to show you the other stuff. I'm going to show you the culprit that, that we all figured was the reason that it, that it went bad and that I had all of this happen, which is a common RB issue that we all know. And that's the oil pump. Um, once I finally got it disassembled, I pulled the pump apart. Um, some people state that on the on the back side of the pump where the screws are and the plate, you can actually see the screws starting to back out. In my case, I couldn't see that. Um, but I took the plate off just because I want to investigate underneath anyways. And there was no doubt. Um, let me let me take you over there. I'll show you that. Um, I mean, as you can see on the table, I've got a majority of the parts out. I'm going to work through trying to see what I can eliminate, um, what just needs to be updated and what I can reuse. Um, the turbos I'm going to send out, make sure um, those are still good. I had an absolute ton of oil, a ton of oil absolutely everywhere, um, which I shouldn't have had that much oil. Um, even, even on the block, when I, when I pulled the head off, like the tops of the pistons were just absolutely flooded. I mean, they were just, uh, was it number three, I think was just sitting in like this much oil, like it was ridiculous. So, um, again, like I've said from the beginning, I have to solve oiling issues, um, and the lack of and everything else and controlling oil, which is what I've said since I brought it back. Even, even basically before I, I had taken it out to the track, I knew that was going to be a problem um, and had already looked into it. But of course, what happened at the track moved all that forward. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys the oil pump. Um, I'll show you real quick what I got on the table. Let me move this camera just real quick and I'll be able to show you what we got going on. So of course we have the block. Not really much you're going to be able to see for like the cylinder walls or anything else. Um, I don't think my flashlight's working. Let me see if I can get a couple seconds out of this. See if I can get that a little better for you, but 
There you go. So you can see the pitting right there on one of the cylinder walls and all of them have just a little bit. So definitely gonna have to work with that. So all the pistons, all the pistons have a little bit of, a little bit of scoring on them. Um, the bearings, of course, I already showed you. The turbos are out. Just an absolute ton of oil everywhere. Um, out of all the things, the water pump actually looked good. But let me show you guys where the real culprit was. So this is, of course, the, the front side of the oil pump. Um, after you take the plate off, which is, the, the, here's the plate and everything that everybody always talks about, like the bolts coming loose and giving it play and everything. Uh, it was tight. It was definitely tight on mine. It's a stock unit, but you can see that uh that's not supposed to happen <laughs> so um yeah i mean you can see that it's cracked there it's cracked at the top and everything else so definitely definitely the cause of the loss of oil pressure and everything else and where it happened and shifting and everything else on that shift was probably the last bit that this that this could take and that was it it was done so um, right now I have the crank just up so you guys can see it. It's a little easier, but like, so that's the number one with the bearing still like fused in there and everything. So I'm going to take the crank. If I have to go to a stroker kit, uh, I'm not going to really be able to use the stock crank anyways, but I'm going to see if the stock crank is, is viable and I can still use it. We'll take this and line hone it or line bore it and uh you know clean up all of that my head actually looks pretty good i'm gonna take it to the machine shop just make sure everything's flowing right get it cleaned up and uh just make sure all the valve seats are right on it because there's no no reason in doing all the lower end and then still having still having some pro you know some issues on the on the head but all looks good on the, let's see if I can show you guys, on the exhaust side, there was just, it's hard to see, let me see if my flashlight will pick that up for you. It, everything was just so like caked on and wet, I mean, just, just incredible the amount of oil that's everywhere. So... I mean, it's just how it goes. I mean, we've gone from hoping it's just some bearings to now everything's ripped apart to it looks like it's going to be either a full rebuild or stroker kit. Um, depending on which way I go, we'll see how it goes at the machine shop and I'll let you guys know. All right, guys. So that's it for now. Um, stay tuned. I'll definitely be giving you all updates as to which direction I go and, you know, how things, how things go from here um, as it goes to the machine shop, as I get more parts in and everything else. Um, I mean, my board, which looked like it was going great, looked like I was going to have everything crossed out and ready to go, is going to get a whole new list of items I need. And instead of it just being stuff for the car, it's now going to have, I, I need another board just for engine stuff. I mean, my, my short shifter did come in, my thermostat came in, but at this point it just doesn't matter um, until, of course, we get, we get the engine figured out. Um, I'll probably do a whole new board just for the engine, see what I can do about just ordering all this stuff that I know is for the, for the rest of the car and start the board all over and just put engine rebuild on it and, and go from there. But anyways, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, thank you for subscribing thank you for commenting um thanks for the likes everything else um as you know i'm going to continue to grow this channel uh the project on uh for my gtr for project shinigami is just the first to come um you know i'm i'm a car guy like it's just going to be one project after the other so once this gets running of course i'll have another project and then this will probably be a never-ending project for me because like I've told you on this, I want to go for a time attack car. That's, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to go next. Um, so, 
you know, the ultimate goal here is initially let's get it running so I can drive it and have fun with it. But if it requires a full stroker kit and everything else, it is what it is. The next time this car, this thing, the engine goes in the car, it's going to hopefully have 900 horse and it's going to be a time attack monster. But if I can put it together and I can get it running and I can start daily driving it, that would be awesome. And then I can build a block on the side and show you how that guy's, how that go, that whole process goes. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate everybody hanging out with me, um, your support and everything else. And come along with the ride with me and uh, we'll have some fun. All right, guys, I'll give you an update in a little bit. Thanks. <laughs>